just a reminder left hand corner there'll be a list of videos there to do with this subject now below the video as well will be all the information you need to know about the video be where I am the stuff that I use I'm all about the equipment the music also don't forget to ring the bell on YouTube that reminds you when I'm bringing out my next video now I'll bring out videos twice a week I'm trying to keep it to Tuesdays and Thursdays but yeah ring the bell and uh, you can carry on now turn right another abandoned urbanisation. We're in the Murphia region, not far from Mazaron really. I thought I'd start off with showing you <clears throat> how do you get to this place. Now this is a place obviously out in the country, a lot of people like living out in the country, a bit of isolation. I don't know if they would like coming down these back roads to it, I don't know. I mean, to me, it looks like they've just got a pin and stuck it in the map, and they said, right, we've built one here. Because I don't think a lot of thought's gone into this. Now, the reason I'm showing you on the back road is, there is another way in, but unfortunately, every time you would need gains or access, you have to go on the toll road, which is the uh, A7, which, you know, can be a bit expensive if you're going to use it every day. Admittedly, you know, if you want to go down to the shops or the beach, yeah, you probably use that way because it's a lot quicker. Because this, going this way is quite a way. Now, right at the beginning, I'd showed you a, a small town, not a lot there. That would have been the nearest town to this urbanisation. And I think the reason why this place collapsed was one, not a lot of thought was put into it really, because there's quite a few villas here. The price of the villas was overpriced, and I think this is another reason why this whole villa urbanisation thing collapsed anyway. In 300 metres, turn right. Because um, these villas were 300,000 upwards. They weren't that big, really. You know, some of them had pools, some of them didn't. <clears throat> well, i just got to be careful on the roads here, because I've got the sun in my face. Right, then turn left. Okay. Turn left. Yep, that's turn right. left. Yep. Continue for one and a half kilometres. You probably notice to my right <coughs> the uh, almonds are starting to blossom, which is a good sign. Because we're only into January at the moment. Early January. It's been really cold. We've been told that the weekend that there's a possibility of snow, but today it's another lovely sunny day. that you can see in front is where this place is meters, slide right. but yeah it is a bit out in the sticks I think if you was using this as maybe as a retirement place yeah, possible you know especially if you retired and you like going out on bike roads or hiking I mean I would imagine in looking at the area there's a lot of hiking areas but I think if you were sort of looking for a bit more variety, especially getting out and about, coming down these roads every day would sort of, I don't know. Slide right. Get me going a bit. Oops. Especially on these roads. <laughs> Continue for 800 meters.
I mean, because obviously people live out here, so there will be people on the roads. Thankfully, we haven't met many people yet. <laughs> the actual urbanisation, it is in a sort of, I call it a small hamlet. There's some houses there. I couldn't remember seeing any shops there or anything. So if you did want anything like milk and bread, you probably would have to travel out all the time. Now we're just coming up to be crossing the toll road soon. In 300 meters, turn left. Well, I can see the place now. <clears throat> what you will notice of these verbalizations is what I, how I found it really. They all stick up these massive Take the next left. signs, advertising boards on big long poles. I mean, obviously, it's so you can catch it. Continue for one kilometre. <clears throat> and I wouldn't even say really, because it's sort of tucked down at the bottom of the mountain there, that you got much of a view, really, other than you might be able to look up and see the mountain. But as the sun is sort of behind it. I would imagine they're gonna be in the shade most of the time, but we'll have a look. So we're just going over the uh, toll road now, the A7. Now that road would have taken you down to Cartagena and then if it's going to my right now, it'll take you down to Maveron, or even right on down towards Granada. In 400 meters, <coughs> turn right onto Camino del Campillo Palace. So we're coming into this little hamlet now. Some nice little houses here. Obviously it's uh, like a farming, farming village. And some big houses, obviously. Take the next right onto Camino del Campillo Palace. If I'd have gone left then, that would have taken us back down to the toll road. In 300 metres, turn left. So this is the urbanisation. I don't know if you can see the big sign on the left now, but you can see the banners. The banners are still here. I'm going to put all the information that I know below the video anyway in the description. But this is the place, this would have been the urbanisation. the next left, then your destination will be on the right. <coughs> So this would have been the way in. 300 meters, turn right toward Camino del Campillo Palace. So I'm at the main entrance. There's the name of the place there. I'll put that just here, the name of this place. Now this place was started in 2008. They started actually building in 2009. The only problem with these properties, they were a bit overpriced. They started from 30,000 upwards. Now the the most unique thing about this place, one, it's got a it's got a on it's got a security guard on site. Um, what had happened back in 2010 when the market crashed, um, the banks just pulled it. Now some people did actually buy some of these properties, but I would imagine they had mortgages on them. The other thing is the developer that built this place also built the Hacienda de Alimo. So we know, obviously, that it was a good developer, but I think the main thing was that these were just overpriced. The other thing is that a lot of these properties, I think nearly all these properties are all fully, fully fitted out with bathrooms, um, of all the furnishings that you would expect anyway. But unfortunately, because of the price that it was set, um, the banks obviously couldn't afford it. So what they've done is just fenced in now. Now, there's a possibility that they could reopen this. I don't know. 
I have noticed that some of these herbalizations that I've been going to, some work's been going on, especially putting up fence. Now, I would presume that's more to do with health and safety. But yeah, it just proves that when you, if you're looking at property, um, especially this place, because it's, it's fully established, it's got trees, it's got gardens and whatever else. Got to be so careful, guys. Got to be so careful. Anyway, I'm going to try and get the drone up <laughs> before the security guard turns up. So I hope you enjoyed that. As you can probably hear, we're right actually on the uh, Corvera route as well. You've got planes coming in from uh, Malaga Way, no doubt, and some are coming over the sea. So it's, in a sense, it isn't a prime location. Anyway, it's only a, a short vib. Unfortunately, because I can't get in there, I have gone around. <laughs> There's no holes in the fence, and I know that the car is over there, the security guy. Thankfully, he hasn't been up yet. Anyway, I hope, as you, I hope you enjoyed that. As I always say, you've got to keep watching, guys, because if you don't keep watching, you're going to miss something. Anyway, I'll catch you on the next one. But, yeah, remember, keep watching.